Have you worshipped tonight, Oakwood? Have you come here to worship and praise the name of the Lord Most High? Have you felt his presence here as we have celebrated his name? This has truly been an AY of celebration. This has truly been a night of inspiration that truly reminds us that the love of God brings us together. Now, I see the time, and so we're going to have what is called a 10-minute word. We're going to have that 10-minute that sermon, and let's let the Lord work tonight. But before that, I just want to say my name is Daniel, and I am Canadian. Amen. But before we begin, please bow your heads and close your eyes with me. Dear Lord, I simply thank you for who you made us to be, Lord. We are each one of us, your children, Lord. We belong to you. I simply pray that we would glorify you tonight. May we truly hear from your word. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today is all nations A-Y. We come together to celebrate our cultural diversity. We come together to glorify the name of the Lord for who he has made us to be. And yet there is a question on my mind. Why is cultural diversity so important? Why does it matter that we remember who we are and where we have come from, who God made us to be? You see, too often in history, our differences have been used to put us against each other, that we would squabble and fight and bicker, and often our differences have got in the way of unity. So I have to ask myself, why do we thank God for diversity? This morning, I was spending some time with a friend of mine completing an assignment. And as you do, we put music on in the background. And so while we were stuttering, we got to talking about, you know, our favorite types of music, the genres we listen to. And then my friend asked me, what is the most bizarre music you have ever heard? And I surprised him. I showed him some music from my country in Canada, native music of the Inuit from the Arctic. And I put it on, and he was scared. You see, they sing with a technique called throat singing. And so with that, they're able to sing with what sounds like two voices. Now, this is a style of music he has never heard before, and it was unfamiliar to him. And because it was unfamiliar, it made him uncomfortable. And you see, things that start to make us uncomfortable, we begin to find frightening. And too often in our history, governments and powers have used that to put us against each other. And so I ask you, why do we celebrate cultural diversity? And so we turn to the Word of God. Our passage is Acts chapter 17, verses 24 to 27. This is that 10 minute word, so we're going to be quick. Acts 17, 24 to 27. God is speaking to the Athenians about the unknown God, and he is making him known. And this is what he said The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he appointed times for their existence and the boundaries of their land and where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps reach out and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. Do you notice what Paul has said in his opening to the Athenians? Do you notice what Paul is saying of why God made the nations? You see, Paul is attributing the diversity of nations to God's plan. 
He's saying God did this. And he did this for a reason. That reason is so that they would search for God. Now what does that mean? Why would God use cultural diversity? Why would God place us in different lands so that we would search for God? And for that reason, you have to go back to the beginning. That story of where God scattered the peoples. The Tower of Babel. You see, we have heard that story so many times. We have meditated on it, heard it for children's story and Sabbath school. But do you understand what is going on in this story? The people of the earth have just come out of the flood. And what is their first act as a community? They are united, one civilization, and they decide to build a tower to heaven. Why? Because, see, they did not trust God's promise. When he said, I will not flood the earth again, they didn't believe him. And so they said, let us have a safety precaution. Let us build a tower so high, we will go to where God is so that he cannot get us again. They were trying to save themselves from God. Imagine how ridiculous that is. They were trying to save themselves from their Savior. That is what happened when the people were one civilization, one nation, one tongue, one people. They came together and said, let us save ourselves from God. The most ridiculous thing we could ever think. You see, there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is death. And see, God sees this, and he knows that if he lets them go through with it, it would be for their own ruin. And so what does God do? He decides to go down there. They wanted to come up to him, and he said, no, I'm going to come down there to them, and I am going to diversify their tongues, that they would not be able to communicate or understand each other. Why would God do this? Paul told us in Acts, he did this so that they would search for him. God diversified the nations as an act of salvation. God scattered them across the earth to save them from themselves. Think about that. Your cultural diversity is an act of God for salvation. In order to save you, in order to save us, he had to separate us so that we would search for him. Cultural diversity is the will of God so that we may be saved. Now, why does that matter? Why does it matter that this is so important? Because you, you notice that sometimes you hear this word used too often, the civilized world. You see, in history, there's a certain group of people who we have been taught brought civilization to the world. You see, they came around and spread their culture and their rules, and they civilized the barbarians. But see, when I look at Scripture, I come to an understanding that there is no one civilization that is better than another. Each one was created by God so that we would search for him. We are diverse because it is God's will for our salvation. So don't let anybody tell you to, why don't you just become part of of the greater culture? Why don't you just assimilate? Why do you care so much about who you are and where you've come from? Why don't you just accept the majority ruling and become one of the mass? And the Tower of Babel tells us why. Because when the people came together, they decided to save themselves from their Savior. And for their own salvation, God said, I cannot let that happen. I will scatter them across the earth so that they would search for me. And Paul ends that speech with the Athenians with those beautiful words. God is not far from us. That is our 10-minute word, a brief reflection that diversity is God's plan of salvation. Let us thank God for who we are and where we've come from. May we never forget our heritage, who God made us to be. We're going to join in that song of the Lamb in Revelation for the Lamb has ransomed from every tribe, tongue, nation, and people of the earth into the kingdom.
we are a family of God, no matter where we come from. And don't let anybody tell you different. Amen? Amen. Amen.